And then uh, let's go into some Q and A because I know you guys got questions, so I'll answer them to the best of my abilities. Let's jump in. Pop, pop, pop. Why is this banner? Okay. Ah, ah. I started some. Here we go. John Hunter. Ah, who here is in Voyager? V Y G V F Y V Y. They're a publicly traded company. He's talking about stocks here. Could this be the next uh, GameStop? If we millions of holders become the, the good Samaritans, maybe it's time to bail ourselves out instead of looking for someone else to do it. He's talking about a short squeeze. I'm not a big, uh, I don't really get into stocks, but uh, it's a potential. Just bring it up. Interesting stuff. Bob's Garage is smart. He said this, this is exactly what we all should remember. What we all learned is that all these big investment houses aren't as smart as they think they are. It's hubris, it's pride, it's we'll never come down. And I think this is what happened with Three Arrows Capital. We made billions of dollars, we're gonna make another $100 billion or whatever they thought they could do. And we'll do it in the way that we do in this new economy. And we're gonna invest heavily into, into DeFi and these projects are gonna make sense and algorithm stable coins. And so there's a reason why I follow those rules, those five rules now are fallen pit, fallen forever just trying to bring it to everybody's attention uh, to save my butt uh, during these times. Cause we get exuberant and hubris comes in pride. And we're like, I can do this. I can do this. This is great, but we have to rein ourselves in, which is why I give you two sides of the same story. Uh, all right, Richard, I didn't expect Voyager free so quickly. True. Most of my draws are pending. I'm questioning my life now. Oh, that was, what I was going to tell you. So I reached out to Steve Ehrlich on uh, from Voyager. I said, look, man, uh, I know this is a really bad day. Obviously, it's a bad day for a lot of people. But if you ever want to come to the show, you got a platform and uh, love to have you. You can talk about what's going on. And he said, look, essentially coming out of this, I can't talk anything right now. We're going through a lot of processes. But rest assured, we're doing the best that we possibly can. He goes, I can't come in because of legal ramifications because that's what legal team says. He goes, but we are working in the background to make things happen, which is a lot better response than I got from anybody else in other platforms when I reached out. So at least the communication lines are open. Does that mean things are gonna jump back tomorrow? No, but it is odd. They make a loan to three hours capital, 12,000 or 15,000 Bitcoin, 200 or $350 million or USDC. They get a loan from Alameda Research for roughly the same amount. So they're pretty much there. Then they stop down and they say no more withdrawals. It's just something, Something is happening that I don't know about or happening behind the scenes. It doesn't make sense. If you have that, mon that much money as a loan, I know there's provisions to the loan. Maybe that provision to the loan was, was uh, withdrawal and staying liquid. Maybe that was the issue. I don't know. But uh, insolvency versus liquidity. Anyhow. Bitcoin teetering at 19K. Really? Yeah, that's true. I like them. I also like the thumbnail, David. Everybody say hi to Mullet. He's my number one wrench moderator and i just gave out a bunch of wrenches today so welcome you get a wrench and you get a wrench and you get a wrench i'm happy all the moderators are here to keep things tame as much as possible i'm not here to silence anybody but if you're going to be disrespectful and crazy uh come on come on it's hot in houston yeah it's hot in el paso and david says beating you in sweat coin steps you son of a no, i was kidding oh yeah i'm losing today I need to start walking. All right. Uh, more questions. <laughs> Bullish Stevie says it perfectly. Pretty sure Ledger sales are booming. Yeah, I'm pretty sure too. Me and Ledger had a little falling out. <laughs> we had a little falling out uh, not uh, months and months and months ago because uh, just because of some, there were just requirements and things like that. I still, I mean, I have, there's a link in the description. I don't even think it's an affiliate link that actually even works. So sorry, but it's there, so you can you can do it. But uh, they got they got ticked off each other. But still a great product. Can't stop that. Ah, uh, disruptive Deborah comments in the Celsius short squeeze. Now I see that that short squeeze is is really built to punish the people that uh, have shorted Celsius, and that's not going to do much for the people who are on my show or who watch me, my energy is to find a way forward to get people to be able to be able to withdraw and get their funds back. So I don't really care about the short squeeze. That's me personally. Sorry. 
Um, it's a great question. How much this pool table, this is a green screen. I'm in my mom's basement. But if it was real, uh, you know, you just brush it once a week. Uh, since it's indoors, it doesn't need many chemicals. And, um, you know, just balance, balance the pH level and you're pretty good to go. Every so often you use some of this, this super water clarifier. King of the shills. And it uh, works out pretty well. Again, green screen, mom's basement. Safest stable coin. Uh, this is one of my favorites, my favorite questions. I like USDC, and uh, I'm sure people could quote me why. Alaire, the CEO of Circle, came before Congress and said, look, we backed everything up by uh, dollars and assets, and here's all our paperwork. Here you go, Congress. Take a look. We have nothing to hide. And uh, so I, if I'm going to use a stable coin, it's USDC. Tether, yeah, the British Virgin Islands, uh, they had an audit uh, go through, and uh, they were not depegged when everything happened with Luna. That's true. Just something in my gut that says don't use it. So I don't use it. Again, on this show, it's uh, not me telling you what to do. It's just me telling you what I do. And then you can do your own research and figure out what's best for you. USDC is my, is my jam. Ah, this is a great question. Razzie Mantia, uh, Rob, your beer of choice. So I like talked about yesterday, I like a vintage uh, Chateau Miller Lété which is uh, Miller Lite. Uh, usually the vintage year of uh, 2022 is my favorite. And uh, if not, I will pick up a fine Keystone Light, uh, which is uh, the cheapest beer you can possibly get, except for Steel Reserve, which is awful. So I don't have a refined palate, as you may have heard. But I'm pretty much a minimalist anyhow. I know this house doesn't look like it, but trust me. Uh, have you seen what I drove? I drive a... 2018 Dodge Grand Caravan, which is almost paid off. It's great. Fuel functionality, haul around the grandkid and the dogs and family members. It's awesome. But uh, yeah. So it's a good question, Patrick. No Bud Light. Nah, I had to, I had to choke it down yesterday after volleyball, and it was not fun. Schlitz, no. My pops used to drink Keystone. Well, here you go. Although, like I said, I'm not your dad. Do whatever you want. Um, awesome kind of you. Thank you, Mo. Uh, just curious to mention a while back that most of your viewers came in 2021. Wondering who are still here in the 2021s, the most more experienced. Which is, yeah, most uh, during that bull run, we had a lot of people sign up uh, via subscribers. I think I gained like 100,000 subscribers in a very short amount of time. And then right here, what's crazy about my channel, I take a look at the analytics, is that it's always this, mostly I have a, the same amount of people who show up. And, I, and, and if you're watching, you're probably those, those people. And uh, the views are always between around 30 to 50K every video. And uh, I don't get a ton of new people right now and because I got to tell you, uh, I like it that way. Be and I'm going to tell you exactly why. It's because when the bull run was happening, I had a big run-up of people. And you know, I could get like 100,000 views on a, on a, on a video. The problem was, is I had so many tourists in crypto and I got so, I got, I never have been called a boomer more in my life than during the bull run. Oh, and also stupid, uh, ignorant, dumb, uh, and a, a, whole, a litany of different names just because I would talk about basic stuff and dollar cost average and taking profits and how retarded I was and blah, blah, blah. So yeah. So what was great about that is that once the bull run went away, those people went away. And the people that are watching right now, you're my people. You are the people that I can talk to and feel mostly like myself and not be like, well, you know, maybe this could work and maybe this and maybe Anchor Protocol, and maybe, I don't know. And uh, it just got so annoying. So now I can just be myself and go, this is what I'm going to do. This is how it goes. It's just, this is my plan going forward. If you love it or leave it, that's it. So yeah, thanks for sticking around. I cannot agree with you, Beach. Natty Ice, I mean, 5.9% is pretty high, but I do that now. <laughs> Fast and Furious with family. For better or for worse. Yeah. Thank you. Tool. Tool. Yeah. <laughs> well, you have Richard Hart again to talk about Pulse Chain that will skyrocket your views. Oh, that's true. I got to tell you, though. If you think that XRP army is more of an army as the biggest, most vocal army in crypto, it is not. 
It is the hexagons and things like that. Me personally, I can't stand them. And I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> I'm going to tell you why. Because they're the rudest people that I've ever come in contact with. Just because I disagree with somebody. And I'm not saying all of them. I'm not saying all of you, all, everybody who believes in Richard Hart and Hex and whatever else are like rude. But a higher percentage of them really are a bunch of... And I was like, look, man, I'm old. My grandson will be here in a second. Well, I'm, and we're going to go to the water park. And I don't have time for that. Sorry. And again, but again, it is my responsibility as an investor to find the best deals. That's true. Have you seen James yesterday about bankruptcy? Sirico was in it. And we'll see what happens. We're the ones here for the long haul. Yeah. Well, that's so here's the question then. If, if Circle goes through bankruptcy and then USDC goes away, then do you really only have one, which is Tether? However, we'll see. James also thought that there was going to be a fat ETF coming in, in June or July. And he even said it on DCA. He's like, well, I wasn't right about that. We're not all 100% correct. Right? What did I call? Didn't I call for 150K Bitcoin in 2021? There you go. Didn't I call for VGX at $30? There you go. So again, you can't trust me. You can't trust anybody. Everybody's a scammer. Everybody's a... So just do your own research and, and really think, is that, is that what it's going to be? What is your wife drive? Well, she drives the minivan, or and then she's not. We got a Dodge Ram, 2017 Dodge Ram truck. We're in Texas. You have to have a truck. Are you talking? Kidding me? But that's just for loading stuff and work and stuff. Do you like Mexican? I love it. Mexican food and and Mexican women. My wife is from Mexico. She's from Juarez originally. How much do you use DeFi, if at all? I don't use that much. I never really got into it. I really, under, I mean, I understood it. It sounded interesting. It just sounded a little bit uh, crazy. Um, let's see. Keystone, Keystone Mine is the best. Stable fund, I have not. Oh, this is a great, this is a great question. This is the things we need to talk about more. What's your best advice to reduce the stress while waiting for the transfers to complete between exchanges and your wallet? The big thing that I always take a look at is the um, on-chain on -chain track or on-chain like, uh, like ETH scanner or use the uh, 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 Bitcoin scanner where you can just take a look at the, the hash and see if it's pending, if it's complete and go from there. Because a lot of times when I would, when I would transfer funds, if I had to transfer funds from my, my Nano Ledger or from Voyager, when I could do that, I would also take a look at the hash, and just watch it and just say, okay, well, it's, it's pending. At least I didn't screw up that part. And then uh, I would just uh, go from there. And then also in my MetaMask wallet, if I would always just take a look at the transaction hash, take a look at the ETH scanner, just see if it's uh, pending, watch it, see how much it uh, takes, if it was denied or rejected, and go from there. And if that doesn't sound... Um, like something you know how to do, then just go to danteachescrypto.com. It's 100% free. It's always free. It always will be free. And we talk about that in one of the modules of just teaching you the basics of crypto. Easy, Zimmy. Zima is ridiculous. What's up, buddy? Huh? Why are you whispering? <laughs> so my grandson's here. He just reminded me. Hey, everybody. Hey, Gabe. Say hi. Hi. So we're going to go to the water park. And uh, that's how you don't worry about so many things. Just get out. I know a lot of you people have lives, obviously, but I think it's important just to get out with the family and do things. And again, reminders, sometimes just shake it off. It'll be fine. It'll be okay. You've got time. Uh, I thought the same thing wouldn't happen in 2018. And here we are right now. So let me just think about that in the comment section. I got to take this kid to the water park. Let's get out of here. So have a great weekend. Happy 4th of July, everybody. See you on the next one. Adios.